Okay, let's see if, uh, if things work now. First, let me just run stuff. Still seems slower than before. All right, so it's slower. This could be disk cache. Uh, let's try to do another run. But at least we're getting profile data. It, that must have been VTune. I, I, I can just smell it. That's VTune. Uh, oh, there's no sound? Let's just check. Testing, testing. You can't hear sound at all? I'm looking at the volume levels on OBS and it says there's audio. Can anyone confirm that we're good? All right. So this definitely is a lot slower, which is interesting to say the least because I don't think we really changed anything. Um, Let's try moving back to the original with the realloc, which it's possible the realloc was, was kicking in, but that seems like a lot that I would say of two to three seconds. Yeah, that doesn't seem to make a difference. This is banana cakes. Yeah, no, I, I, I enabled type, type checking um that was the point and that used to take seven seconds seven to eight i think that's what i was trying to check this is definitely much slower um let me try something weird here um sorry this is not really what i wanted the stream to be about but I don't really feel I can move on before I have somewhat of a handle on this. Um, The, someone's asking if capturing samples can account for the drop in performance. Not really, because the measurements from before were also capturing stuff. And this is so. This is lower. Um, I mean, in theory, there's all kinds of weird stuff on the system that can perturb performance, right? Um, So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to, well, I'm going to stop looking at this now. Uh, the thing that was bothering me was the the fact that the profiler wouldn't even run. All right, that is bizarre. I have to somehow bisect. Like again, I I don't I don't really see how this could have come from. Let me see. Don't really see how it could have come from, um, from that stuff. I changed the hash function, but that was more just like some cosmetic cleanup. Maybe I actually did something stupid there. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh, this can really account for the difference. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to try to forget about that and, and move on to the thing I wanted to do today. Um, so, okay, let's reset. Um, right now, when you generate a, uh, let's open it up here. Right now, when you generate, so you have something like uh, test one ion, um, when you generate the corresponding C file, it looks. Well, this one is going to be big enough that I understand why I would say that. Why would that be a binary file? That's disconcerting. Um, right, so right now when you take something like test one ion and you generate your corresponding thing over here, um, you get you know you have your four declarations and um, and your order declarations. Um, in, in order to be able to step through this, um, let's see if I remember the exact syntax. Uh, let's see, C preprocessor, pound line. I guess we'll look at what the GCC docs say for that, right? Um, I'm sure you must have seen that if you ever... Um, let me show you an example. So you take something like main.c. It has a bunch of pound includes of other files. Uh, from, the C pro, uh, from the C programs, uh, from the C compiler's perspective, at least assuming it doesn't have a fully integrated uh, preprocessor, um, what it sees is the you know everything after it's already been after all the pound includes have been inlined and so on. And so, in order to actually be able to not only give error messages during compile time about where things originated from uh, in the original header files, but also you know if you have uh, like a debugger and you want to do line level uh, stepping. You need to know where things came from, given that the C compiler actually didn't see those files originally. Maybe it, it saw, um, well, for C files, it usually sees the files directly. Although in a case like ours, where we're pound including C files in our main.c, it wouldn't either. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 the pound line stuff is how, um, how you communicate that information. And uh, I guess GCC actually uses it without any... Um, I thought you had to write pound line. It looks like uh, the GCC CPP here is just uh, using a number directly, which I didn't know was was legal. Um, but anyway, I think the official way to do it is using pound line and then a line number, and you can also specify a file name. Um, and so, basically, what we want to do is we want to generate these directives so that they correspond to the original file where the different statements came from. Uh, particularly statements. I don't really care about other stuff, uh, mainly statements. And so uh, first of all, let's do a very dumb version, which we'll quickly replace, but just to get it in there, let's do a version where every time we generate a statement, we have a pound line directive before it. And uh, for now, it's going to always emit it for every single statement, um, but then we will immediately change it to, and maybe maybe we should just do that in the beginning, to basically have an internal counter to see where where the C to, to see where the C file thinks we are, and only if we have a mismatch do we actually emit a, a pound line uh, directive. So uh, if you go to gen statement, um, basically here we have some some you know we're trying to to emit something. And um, and we're going to do pound line. I'm trying to remember, what do we call this? Loc. Yeah, loc. So loc has a line and a name. And so we're going to emit. What is it? First the line number and then the name. Um, and the file name has to be quoted, right? Yeah. Oh, 
what was it called? Line and name. So this and this. So first, let's just see what that does um, to our test file. Um, and actually, if, if I run this through CPP, what does it say? Maybe it replaces it by its own notation, right? So it replaces it by that internal notation, which I guess is what you use to communicate to the C compiler. So the pound line is what the C preprocessor understands, but the directive without the line included is maybe the, you know, what the C compiler understands. All right, uh, so, so this is line 23, and that would be this here. So let's see what, what that came from. Um, okay, that's not correct. That's off by one because this basically says what the following line is, um, which is actually 24. I think I know what that is. Um, this was on my to-do list as well. Right now, the way I'm hooking up a bunch of, let's just do the statements properly for now. Um, let's see. I think I called current loc, which is a, not a good name. But um, let's say we do, we, we take the current loc. Um, so basically, anyway, let, let me mention why it's not working. Um, I think why it's not working. Um, when we are... We, we did a hack originally when we made these uh, constructor functions to include uh, source location information where we just grabbed, I think, like, like inside this new function. I think we just hooked up the location to be like the previous location we saw. So not the current token, but the one before that. But that's totally bogus. You actually need to provide some kind of explicit. Um, so that, actually, this is a good opportunity to do that. Um, so let's hook that up now where we actually provide the explicit location rather than just kind of making a guess that's probably not quite exactly the right thing. So uh, first, let's maybe rename it because I don't think I like source loc. Uh, let's call it source position. Um, I don't think we need current and previous, but let's just leave them for now. Um, so source loc, what is it? This one. Let's do this, and um, let's do look to post. Remember what's is it? Alt R, yeah. Um, going to have a lot of false positives. Uh, let's say dot loc to dot post. Okay. Um, let's see here. Source post loc. Let me fix that. So this was type spec. All right. Um, Oh, 
Okay. Um, right. So I think what we're going to do is for all the, and this is going to be a bunch of refactoring work, but that's just how it is, I guess. Um, for all of these guys, we're going to actually provide a position. Um, and that's true for all of the new functions. So what's he saying? Oh. I kind of feel like that's the correct order. Kind of in position. Um. It's not very fun work, but sometimes you have to do it. I don't see an easier way of, of doing more stuff with search and replace. All right. All right, and now all of these. Okay, let me just finish these constructor functions. Um, and then we'll do the actual use sites. This is work that needed to be done anyway. Um, sometimes programming is very glamorous and exciting. The good news is that once once we actually done this, the the parser calls itself are I think are very mindless. It's just a matter of, of getting the right token to anchor the positions to, which is going to be right there. Um, Now you can see why I hadn't done this before. I, I maybe could do something more automated, but I suspect it would be more trouble than it's worth. Um, and I probably should have put this in the signatures originally, even if I wasn't ready to fill them in, I, it would have been less work in this case. Uh, right, so, so I somehow skipped that one. Good stuff. Also, one of the times when I appreciate having a, a static type checker. Um, all right. These are probably going down the tubes, to be honest. OK. 
because I don't think these tests have much value at this point. Um, okay, so this is the, the actual meat of it. Why didn't it trigger this? Yeah, this, this one should. Okay, so I didn't do that one apparently. Um, source post post. this one doesn't need this is not really an AST entity maybe this shouldn't even be in this file but um, okay now we're here so it's going to be the first argument of everything and um, basically what we're going to do is sort of as a general pattern is we're just going to uh, we're just going to sample it at some initial anchor point and so it will be something like this. And you know what? It should probably not be current posts. It should be in the token struct. Um, and so if you look at the token struct, um, it should probably be in here, to be honest. Um, Okay, so uh, at this point, we sample the to token position, and then we pass it in here. Um, and I think similarly for this stuff. Well, I mean, you could also, I guess, make a strong case that it should be here because these functions are going to handle it themselves internally. Um, feels like these compound fields should also have a position because if you look at a compound it's a array of these guys so that's I would say should be part of it um, So this is a compound type. Um, Um, OK, 
here you have to be a little bit, uh, it should be in here because this is a loop. So we need to get the right thing for every occurrence. I think this was not a loop, so this is fine. All right. Um, and then Um, right. This is a loop. Um, and then for this one, yeah, I mean, I guess it should be associated with the beginning of the whole thing. So like this. Um, all right. Okay, I guess we don't need it for that. Um, Statement blocks, sure. Um. I wonder if this is actually the right position for these statement things, because the way these are parsed is that the keyword is matched outside of the functions. Um, so it might actually be more correct. I think this is correct. But for these guys here, I think the correct way to do it is actually, because we're parsing the keywords here, I think we should probably do it like this. Um, not that it's hugely significant, but um, this feels annoying. Okay, let's do it like this and pass it in. Um, Okay, so we just pass it in. This one is different. I think you can just do it like that. Um, and you can, you can take this one. Our switch case. All right. Um, each of the cases. I guess the switch cases probably also deserve. No, they don't really deserve to get their own source location. Actually, now that I think about it, because if this is just an organizational unit, each of the pieces here has their own source location. 
Um, all right. Let's see here. Okay. Um, cannot convert. So why is this function taking? Function cannot convert from blah to blah. Why would it say anything about source position? Oh, here, I see. So the name, I guess it's this piece. Um, I see, so this is for the statement block as a whole. I guess maybe that needs, needs that as well. Um, what was that error? Cannot convert from blah to blah. I thought we deleted that. Switch case, blah, blah, blah. There's no cont here. Oh, it's this one. Right, so now we have the declaration functions. And I think these are similar in that, right, the top level function uh, is matches the keywords. That's presumably what we want to associate the position to. Um, We need this information for the, the function parameter. I guess we do. I mean, need is a strong word, but it would be nice. Might as well. Um, anyway. What are we doing on time? All right. I'm going to finish this regardless since I want to get those line directives properly since this was what I wanted to do today even if this is a an unfortunate but necessary uh, yak shaving expedition I guess this one needs it as well Um, no, it doesn't really need to get passed in. 
Um, we just grab it from here. So this is for the thing as a whole, and we go, go, go. Yeah, that looks good. Um, Things. Kind always comes before the other stuff. No? Okay, maybe if, since this is, yeah, let's actually keep it that way, just to be consistent. Um, parse decal var. Yeah, this is another one that doesn't need to get passed in. Let's get rid of this junk. Yeah, so this is kind of an inelegant way of providing that. So right now those are part of the current token. Um, and maybe the proper thing to do actually let's just move yeah, this file is shrinking. This file is not looking long for this world. Um, token, let's see here, let's just move it back in here, even if it's somewhat awkwardly located. Um, Where are we using syntax error? This is probably also not super great, to be honest. Um, Let's see how much stuff got screwed up. That is no longer working. First, let's go back to just the parser. Um, yeah, let's run from here. Well, no, let's not. Let's um, let's not run with the crazy workload, but just uh, basics. Okay, so that at least runs. Uh, so let's look at this file, see what it says. So this looks correct now, but let's verify. Line 24, um, and this is line 24. Thank God. All right. No, not sure what that was. Um, but anyway, you can now see every statement gets this, and it looks correct. So it's actually 24. And this would be 25. Yep. Um, the thing we now want to avoid doing is... Um, 
the thing we now want to avoid doing is we don't want to insert them if they're not necessary. So basically, only when things are desynced do we want to insert these line statements or line directives. <clears throat> so the way we're going to do that is we're going to basically have our own notion, our own virtual, um, like we're going to do our own line tracking. And so um, probably the way to do that is when we emit this, we know basically there's like, let's not worry about the file name part for now. Um, we know that when we do this, you know, th this goes up basically. Um, and hmm, what's the right thing to do? Um, let's say gen sync. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, or gen pose, maybe. Uh, if gen line is not equal to line, then um, then we're going to generate. Again, let's, let's just assume the file names are not an issue for now since we're only dealing with one file. Um, what was it? Uh, pound line, first this, and then the quoted thing. All right. Um, uh, source, source line. source name um, and then we basically sync them I think that's right <clears throat> no that's not quite right we don't sync because the line we just emitted is not the line you know if, if we say let's see here if, if we say line 24 um, it doesn't mean the current line is 24. It means the subsequent line should be interpreted as line 24. So I think you actually want to do something like this because when you then do the gen line, well, actually, let's try this and see what it does. It's easier than trying to reason our ways through it too much. Um, or posts. This is post two, and then we go and search for this one, and then we say gen post um, something like this. Okay, and that doesn't crash. Why did that get reordered? I guess that's based on the hash table being kind of random order, which is a little bit awkward. Um, but this looks right because, so, so let's go and look at the um, the C code, or sorry, the ion code. We have to sync on the first statement, but then after that, we actually, we have the same layout We because we're kind of writing it in the same formatting convention and stuff. But if I, uh, if I now do this and regenerate, um, it should have to insert something extra, right? Because all this stuff is in sync, and then this is out of sync. So is this 27? Yes, it is. And if I move this back, oops. If I move this back, um, we're not back, back where we were. Um, and you can see that it's correctly dealing with the reordering of these things, right? 
So this is the reordering is obviously something that even if you use the same kind of formatting that the code generator uses and you don't have like double line spacings or, or other things like that that would desync it, um, if it actually has to reorder that, I mean, in this case, it doesn't have to reorder them. The reason these things get reordered is because um, we should f decide how to fix that eventually. Um, right now, when you do gen, what is it? Gen ordered decals, it actually walks it walks this, which um, let's see in the resolver, there must be some sort of random thing depending on the hash table that causes these to get invoked in. Yeah, I think it's this thing here. Um, What I should have, and I'll fix this right now. I meant to do this eventually. Uh, this thing here should, um, there should be two things. Um, there should be, oops, there should be both the hash table Um, and there should be the other one. So uh, for this stuff here, this should just be uh, global sims list. It is not equal to buff end global sims list. Something like this. I don't think there's any other global sim stuff in this file. Um, let me just actually compile it because it'll show us the errors. So we want this, and then we also want um, global sims list, I believe. Right, and then for this stuff, we are going to switch to the list so it's totally consistent. Um, okay. Now this should be consistent um, where the order we see things in in the source is going to match the symbol order in the list. So example test is first, then fact iter, then fact rec. Yep. Well, these are reordered, which is probably, but, it, but that's probably induced by the fact that as long as it's consistent, I guess. Let's try doing some multiple runs to see if it's consistent. Um, I think it will be now. Right. All right. Um, and actually, it shouldn't be this. It should be buff. Um, Global sims list, global sims buff. Just to be consistent. All right. I think we're probably going to stop now. That's about an hour and a half. Although much of that was mucking around with stuff that has nothing to do with anything. Um, and I, oh, and I also just realized I forgot to record the second segment, which is a disaster, uh, after I rebooted. So that's really annoying. Uh, I guess I'll have to get it from Twitch. Anyway, great day. Everything just totally worked out. Not, 
Um, all right, so what did we do? We added proper source location information to everything. It hasn't been fully tested, obviously, but compared to the weird heuristic thing we were doing before, this is at least the right approach. Um, and then we added uh, source line synchronization between the ion file and the C file, including not generating redundant directives. Um, and as part of that, we also now made the emission order deterministic because for a while after we switched to the hash map, there was some non-determinism based on the order in which things went in. Why, why would it be non-deterministic though, even with the hash table? Anyway, it seems to be consistent now that we're using, we have both the map and we have the linear buffer and the buffer is insertion ordered. Um, so yeah, not, not maybe as much as I would have wanted to do today, but um, at least we finished that task and all the associated junk. All right, let's see if there's any questions. Just scrolling back. Yeah, someone was saying I should have used the uh, code aware rename tool to change the name of the member of the variable. Um, that would probably have been a better idea than my uh, grep stuff. Um, let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Um, someone's asking, will we generate a main directly? Sorry, will we generate a main directly or generate a main wrapper? Um, the plan is that you'll you'll write your own main code. So I mean, you, it's not trying to provide a kind of like the basic compiler is not trying to provide like a runtime environment or a CRT. So if you're on a platform that needs a main, like you know every C platform pretty much, you would just write the main. So you, I mean, you could do that yourself. Um, that should actually work. So we have a main, let's see if we can compile it. Um, yep, that works. So one thing, yeah, since we, so you, you can, I, I don't know, if, I mean, this doesn't do anything, right? Uh, oh, and I didn't specify. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is our code quote, quote unquote running. Um, I guess, you know, if you wanted to, actually, let's do something fun to actually get real code running. Um, um, gen preamble, if I can spell. Um, Let's see here. I guess we don't have a notion of extern functions right now. Um, let's just hook this up though. Um, let's see, gen order decals. What do we call that? Uh, gen F, gen preamble. Incredible, I, I can misspell that preamble. Uh, it's amazing I can misspell that three times in a row. All right, so that's now in here. And the problem is we don't have extern functions. Um, so let's add those, I guess. Um, actually, yeah, I, I feel bad we didn't get more done. 
So let, let me do that now. Let's add some sort of extra and function support where you can um, where you can specify that you know you can kind of say here's a function that has a certain signature, but you don't provide an implementation. Um, so what syntax should we use for that? I guess. Um, Actually, let's not put it in the parser. Let's just, for now, have the resolver have a way of injecting that kind of information. Um, and then we can just hard code put char or something like that to, to verify it works. Um, OK, let me think. So what do we need? When you, do, when, you, when you reference a function, the main thing you care about, I think it's pretty easy, actually. We just need to, so right now we do this. I think all you need to do is, um, um, so type char, what's, let me check what this, just to verify the exact signature for that thing. Put char. Right, takes an int, returns an int. So, um, there's one, and then we get this back. And we have to write this function. We actually don't need to return that. Actually, let's call string intern name for us. There's no, not much point in avoiding that, even if. Um, and there's no associated declaration because this is just a an extern kind of thing. Sim state, sim resolved. Uh, sim type type sim global put um, and I guess we should assert that this is a function type no actually we don't have to do that let's just call it sim global uh, is there something called sim funk okay there is so I guess let's let's call let's do let's keep that name Um, all right. Okay, so now it should be able to resolve it and it won't choke on it because when you do all the emissions, um, it, it, it only does it for things that have declarations. And so for uh, things that are externs don't have declarations, so those are going to be skipped. And so as long as it, it is mentioned in the preamble, we should be good. Um, and put char is in the preamble because it's in the standard IO. Okay. Well, I guess I should have used puts actually. It's, Let's do put C first. Except that we don't have automatic casts from, from chars to no I actually these are these are ints not chars because it's C. C like semantics. Alright, uh, let's see if that works. Does not work. Let me just put that in debug mode. Do, 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 do. Oh, right. So what do we get from the decal? So where is this getting called? This should only happen for things that have... I think, right? Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So this is for the main function and I see and it's I guess trying to Oh really we don't have Oh that's funny we don't handle expression statements in the resolver that's uh, a stupid oversight. So we had very poor test coverage here. Um, what was that? Oh, put char, not put c. Okay, that worked. Right now we're not preserving the type of declaration um, which needs to be fixed, but this is still correct. In terms of behavior, um, okay, let's do it with puts. Don't have constant qualifiers, but I think we can get around that. It shouldn't be an issue um, for this case. We'll just pretend it it's, it ticks non-consts. Uh, so putsy works. Let's say puts, and let's say this is a pointer to a char. And what does it return? Ant. And then we will do. So we don't need the hello world. We don't need this. Puts prints a new line. Um, sorry, we have to to regenerate it. No, oh, I guess I did. So GCC. Yep. Was not the right thing. Yay! Okay, now I feel better about closing the stream. <clears throat> Someone's saying about changing from release uh, to debug using the toolbar. That toolbar, yeah. I, I removed everything from the tool, toolbar because it steals so much vertical space, and I actually don't change that frequently between release and debug. But anyway, I think that's a good stopping point for today. So we actually let's <laughs> let, actually let's go one step further since I feel bad for not doing more today. Uh, so now we have we can do hello world with uh, put s or puts, and um, let's see. I guess let's. Um, I guess we could write a little script that runs the whole pipeline if we wanted, but um, for now let's do ion test one and test one c and something like this. I I'm not going to do message box A. I think hello world is good enough. Uh, no, the thing I wanted to do was actually do the line level debugging to show you guys how that works with the pound line. So we should be able to maybe set up an alternate project for that. Um,
yeah, let's let's set up a different Visual Studio project for the thing we're actually building. Uh, test project. And then I'm just going to add um, at this. Okay, so now it's actually building this thing here. And so let's. Um, Right, target path. That's probably reasonable. Um, let's set that as the startup project. Okay, so that prints hello world. Um, let us now. So, are you impressed? <clears throat> anyway, I mean, it's not that impressive, but it's pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Desperately needed a drink, but uh, <coughs> that got in the wrong throat. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. So the, the the point is that by getting the pound line stuff set up correctly, we can actually. Uh, okay. So so what I did was let me just recap the steps just so you understand what happened. I created another test project uh, in the same solution just so I can switch between them easily, and I just added our test one C file. So this is the thing that's generated. And this now has all the um, has all of this other stuff, right? Like all the pound lines in order to synchronize the, the line the line positions. And then I set that as the startup, and I just went into this file, and I press F9 in order to set a breakpoint on this line, and then I run, and it actually catches it. So now we're essentially debugging in our own language rather than at the C level, even though the C code is what's what's ultimately going through the compiler. And you can look at, the, I mean, you, you can uh, look at the assembly code even, the, and you can see the assembly code next to our own language, as opposed to next to the C code, even though the C code is ultimately what's being generated and, and passing through the C compiler. So that's pretty neat. If you haven't seen this before, it's pretty cool. Um, and that's one of the reasons that generating C code is so nice, because just by doing this pound line stuff, you can essentially now work in your own language, even though C is really what's doing all the heavy lifting, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe let's do something more interesting. Um, so we have this example test. Um, So I guess this thing isn't really running yet. We should, uh, th this is going to be a little bit awkward until I figure out a better workflow, but we have to rerun this so that we now have the right C file. Um, and then <laughs> have to set this back to the startup project. Anyway, now you can see, <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm, go I'm going to use the vectorial. Um, I'm just going to step through it just to see, show you how you can step through. Um, so yeah, I mean, first of all, you can see this interleave source and assembly stuff. So you can see this actually corresponds to the right thing. If I go back, I can now use my, you know, my control F10, my control whatever. So I, if I press F11 to step into, okay, so this is, it. oh, okay. So I actually, I need to, this is good information. I did not know that. 
Um, you can see that it worked, but let me just redo it in case you didn't notice. So F10, F11, it be, before it enters the function properly, it will actually use the, the declaration line itself for the function rather than the first statement for the cursor. And so because I only generated for statements right now, we don't have, like, for the very first uh, location inside that function, it doesn't synchronize. But then when I do F10 to step to the next thing, it actually does do it. Um, and now it steps into this. I wonder why it's stepping back up every time. Um, because it's it's not really returning. All right. Um, maybe some small hiccups. But let's uh, let, let's generate these for the declarations as well. That's going to be pretty easy. Um, so is it gen decal? Gen func decal. Uh, gen post is this what okay so now if we look at the c file Right, so now it synchronizes on the first line, which means it doesn't need the subsequent ones, uh, which is sweet. Also makes the function bodies look a lot cleaner in the C code. Um, and now if we go back to our test code, should be able to do this. Now if I do F11, right, it never shows us the C code at all. Oh, you can't hover over stuff, but you can, I mean, you can write B. So you can see that B it was indeed one, which means that the iterative and recursive factorial functions computed the same result. And then we step over this and we can see hello world. And now we're done. And it goes to the, yeah, whatever. All right. So the, the pound line stuff, I think you only need to do it on declarations and then, well, I don't know what you mean by printing it on every line. I was doing that before. That's what we optimized away, right? By doing our own parallel line tracking and only emitting it. If you mean for every possible thing you can emit, um, I think it only makes sense to do it for things that actually are, well, maybe we should do it for every line actually. I'll consider that. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard, but you just need to make sure that you're passing in the source p the source position in all those cases. So for now, this is just the stuff I needed for the debugger. But you're right. If if you want to if you want to correlate, like say the C compiler prints a warning, so we should be catching most of the warnings in our compiler, and we shouldn't be passing them through the C compiler. But there probably will be some we're not mirroring, and you do want to have those show you the corresponding ion code. And so yeah, we probably do want that even for non-statement, non-function stuff. But uh, but this is what you need for debugging, which is a, a very good first step, I think. All right, um, let me just see if there's questions, and then we'll step for for real. Someone's asking about Poundifine and Ion. No, I Ion does not have macros. Um, it's a design choice since macros make a lot of things uh, harder, and I would rather add some built-in stuff um, for things that C uses macros for in order to avoid macros as much as possible. Even though, I mean, I, li I like macros in C, but, um, you know, maybe maybe down the line. I, I'm trying to, for, for the original Ion language, I'm trying to keep it very similar to C, except for stuff that uh, is kind of problematic, like macros or... Uh, or pound include style modules and stuff like that. But I mean, down the line, we may do a, a version with more features, um, but I'm trying to keep the first version very kind of minimalistic. Let's see again here. Yeah. 
it's too bad you can't uh, hover over stuff, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. So you can see it's uh, showing and updating up here. And we're pushing, we're popping the stack. And we should eventually go up into example test again, and then we can go into iter. You should be able to see R and I, R and I. We should see the factorial being built up iteratively now, one factor at a time. Which is pretty neat, I guess. All right, so I feel like we ended with a decent payoff uh, for all the crappy garbage refactoring work we had to do and all the mucking around with uh, with VTune screwing up my system apparently. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the stream now. Unfortunately, I've, I I didn't record the second half, so I'm gonna have to somehow grab that from Twitch, which is annoying. But uh, but yeah. Um, I may stream more more this week. I'm planning on working pretty intensely on uh, getting Ion into sort of version zero uh, release candidate status by end of next weekend. And so I may do more streaming this week than usual. Um, people shouldn't feel obligated to watch it, but just uh, in order to uh, to keep the momentum going, I might do that. But uh, but yeah, this is this is pretty fun. Obviously, uh, there's still a bunch of other stuff missing in order for it to be usable. But now we can at least we can compile quote unquote real code that uses stuff that we've manually exposed from the C standard library like puts and we can debug it uh, using the native debugger and line level synchronization and all that stuff which is pretty cool I think. So uh, that's it for today. I will see you next time.